Well, good morning, you sexy little mother of Hubbards. Uh, it's time for an alternative paper review. First up, like conjunctivital thyroid, we're going straight for the eye. Interest rates might have to rise again next year, warned the Bank of England. Do they, though? That is the question on my mind. Do they actually need to go up? Because we've always spun this yarn, we're always fed this narrative that when there is inflation, the only tool in the bank's arsenal is to continuously hike interest rates. That makes mortgages more expensive than in due course. That makes rents more expensive. We've all got less money and then we can't afford the items. So then manufacturers and retail outlets have to drop the price and then that kills the inflation. That is the theory. However, it's widely accepted the only reason inflation has gone down by half is because the price of oil and gas on the global energy markets has tumbled. And, quick history lesson for those of you with the memory of a goldfish, the only reason inflation actually began to soar so uncomfortably was because we wound down infrastructure and gas production throughout the pandemic because people were staying in, they were flying less, they were using less petrol. Then you had uh, other complications frustrating the supply of natural gas. So global energy markets sparked the inflation and global energy markets settled it again. So I don't know why we've got a chancellor or prime minister claiming to have halved inflation. Or for that matter, any major developed country's domestic central bank taking credit for it. The fact is, and look, I am no economist, but as far as I can see, as far as I can establish, I don't think raising interest rates 13 times did anything to battle inflation. Because even if we just sideline all of the energy market stuff, right? If you look at the Swiss economy, you have the Swiss central bank. Do you know what they haven't done? They didn't raise interest rates at all. They kept interest rates low. I think it's still like 1.9% there. And their inflation rate is also coming down. And here's the part that will make you vomit yourself inside out because maybe you're thinking, well, hang on a second. If it doesn't bring inflation down, inflation came down pretty much organically by itself. Why would they hike interest rates 13 times? Why have my mortgage payments doubled? Why have my brother's or sister's or barber's rent payments as a byproduct of buy-to-let mortgages soaring? Why has their rents gone up by four, five hundred pounds a month? Why is that necessary? And the answer to that, ladies and gentlemen, is so the banks can make a killing. That's capitalism. Thanks for playing. So anyway, yes, can't wait for them to hike it again for a 14th time while the tabloids stand around wondering why homelessness in Liverpool has doubled or tripled in Southampton. I just don't know where all these homeless people are coming from. It's time to make tents illegal. Next up to the mail, who have now the crown, made by Harry's Netflix paymasters, portrays William egging him on to wear the Nazi fancy dress. <laughs> Now, this isn't actually a sort of headline. It's almost like a promo kind of thing up the top. But it's so interesting. I just wanted to touch on this for a second. So first up, like, let's go through it piece by piece. Now the crown made by Harry's Netflix paymasters. Like, the, the word paymasters is just dripping in contempt, isn't it? Like, straight, straight out of the gate. I don't particularly love Harry and Meghan, and I don't particularly love the royals. Like, I don't really have a dog in this race. I don't care for any of them. But saying that, like, they're paymaster, it's like you're sort of casting aspersions, like they are funded by Netflix. Netflix is who is funding Harry and Meghan. Like, I'm sure they've done a thing for Netflix, and Netflix have paid them very handsomely for it. But Netflix are not Harry and Meghan's paymasters. They do jobs for other people, they do speaking engagements. Let's just abandon that completely. That's ridiculous. Then it's like the crown portrays William egging him on to wear Nazi fancy dress. I'm just gonna say, I think that happened. I do. And the reason I think that happened, so I, this is a story that sort of came out, I think it was in a book and an interview last year, where they said, well, look, you know, William and Kate actually dared him to do it. I think that probably happened. I think it's a recollections may vary kind of situation though, where he said, oh, should, should I wear this? And then maybe William or Kate were like, go on then. <laughs> see what happens like that is kind of technically a dare egging on but the way that it's talked about or reported makes it sound like it was William and Kate going like I dare you to wear this those are two very different kinds of dare and egging on right so yes I think it happened in some capacity I think that is true and I think it's ridiculous of the male to get so weirdly offended by it by the mere suggestion or allegation that the future King of England might have dared someone to do something so abhorrent, so distasteful, when the male itself 
has such a problematic history with this stuff. <laughs> Do they have any self-awareness whatsoever? It's like, oh, how could you? How could you accuse the future King of England of egging on someone to wear a fake Nazi uniform when we, historically, traditionally, have egged on actual Nazis? Guys, just quickly, tonight I'm doing a live stream on YouTube at half past seven. My special guest this evening is Super Tansky. Don't miss it. Subscribe, like, comment, all of the other annoying stuff that people say at the end of videos like this.